Okay, this is 14.6. Um, addendum. Example 2. This is the different spherical coordinates question. I'm going to phrase it a little bit differently. Uh, there are different things to work out, as we'll see. So we'll say, suppose D is the solid. This will be inside the sphere x squared plus y squared plus c squared equals 4 and outside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1 and uh, if the density is say f of xyz equals z squared find the mass so solution so abstractly of course the mass is simply the triple and triple over d of the density function z squared dv the question is um, how do we handle d So first, let's look at a picture. Picture will tell us everything. So we're inside the sphere, but outside the cylinder. So this is a bit of an odd picture. So we'll be very, very careful here. So the sphere has radius two and the cylinder has radius one. So we'll draw the sphere first like this. So we are inside that. We are outside this cylinder. So what that means is we're sort of in this ring shape thing right here. This is the D. It goes all the way around, um, but this ring like object is D. So here's sort of a reasonable picture of D um, without any of the axes. So imagine a circle, imagine most of a sphere, but there's a hole that's been drilled through it. Like this. So there's a hole in here. Cylindrical hole. So, as per the usual, for spherical coordinates, we need to know the ranges of the three variables. So, this is what we see. First one's pretty easy again. Theta. Theta is typically pretty easy. We see that theta goes, in this case, 0 to 2 pi. Because there is a, there's sort of D all the way around. And then B. How about phi? So this is sort of um, actually one of the trickier ones. All right, so let me redraw the blue picture, keeping in mind that the origin is right in the middle. So here's the object. So what you want to do is you want to put yourself smack of the origin, floating in space. Actually, let me make sure that I have the hole right here. Now. If you are at the origin um, and you look straight up, you see nothing. There is no D. So when you swivel your angle, all of a sudden the object starts right here. Whatever that angle is, it's not clear. So D begins here and it keeps going until right here. This is where D ends. So what angles are these? What are these angles? So we have to say, like, where do they come about? Well, they come about um, at the places where the sphere and the cylinder meet. So they are where the cylinder 
meets the sphere. So what we'll do is we'll take those two and we'll rewrite those in spherical coordinates. So here's the cylinder. This is uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1, which in, which in spherical coordinates, we've seen this before, this is rho squared sine squared phi equals 1, or actually we write it all out, rho squared sine squared phi equals 1, which then becomes rho equals cosecant phi, and the sphere this is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. This becomes simply rho equals 2. So these meet when the rows are equal. In other words, we set them equal. So these meet when cosecant phi equals 2, or when sine of phi equals 1 half. And this occurs. at uh, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So pi over 6 is the upper one and 5 pi over 6 is the lower one. So what that tells us is that, let's say thus, phi goes pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So then C is how about rho? So let me redraw the picture. Again, not too difficult in this case. Here's our object. So again, I want you to put yourself at the origin, smack in the middle, right here, and take a trip out through D. And so when you leave the origin, there is no D. In the middle here, there's a space. And then you hit the cylinder, then you pass through D, and then you hit the sphere. And that's the same no matter which direction you go. If you go this way, cylinder, sphere. If you come forward, same thing. So first we hit the cylinder. Now that we know is rho equals cosecant phi from upstairs up at the top of this page. And then this is when we sort of enter D. And then second we hit the sphere. That is rho equals 2. So those, those are our two rho functions. So thus, rho goes from cosecant phi to 2. So finally, we can say the mass, this is the triple integral over d of z squared dv. Outside integral is theta, 0 to 2 pi. Next integral is phi, pi over 6, to 5 pi over 6. Next one, rho, because secant phi, the cylinder, to 2, the sphere. Then we have z squared, that becomes rho cosine phi squared. Then we have the Jacobian rho squared sine phi. Then we have d rho, d phi, d theta. Again, just to make sure it's clear, this z squared became this. This was our Jacobian. And now at the end, we have an iterated integral. We just evaluate. And that's it.